Hi. So in this chapter, we're going to discuss sets. And a lot of the time, students say this is so different and new. But really, um, it's not. You know, especially if you've taken algebra, you've done inequalities before. And inequalities are sets of numbers. So um, you've done sets before. We just never told you they were like sets, but yet inequalities and an interval of numbers. But yet we've always done sets and inequalities. So if you can recall, if you took algebra, you know, if you had some sort of inequality to solve, right? Right, and you had to like solve this right, you would get some sort of inequality um, answer and then x, some um, inequality, some number, right, and then you would rewrite it in interval notation, which had the parentheses and the brackets. Okay, so when we say x is less than, greater than, right, we were just talking about all numbers that are less than, or all numbers. We weren't talking about one number, we're talking about a lot of numbers. And so the answer here, we always called a set of numbers, which essentially has more than one answer, right, one solution. And that's why we call it an inequality. And so we're going to use this idea and kind of extend them to different things. Like uh, there's a set of um, dog species, right? Um, and a set of feline species. Um, there's a set of tomatoes, right? There's grape tomatoes, heirloom tomatoes, tomatoes on the vines, steak tomatoes, grape tomatoes, right? So everything is essentially from a set of something. And we're just going to expand this idea into this chapter. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is talk about the basics. So a set now is not a collection of numbers because we're not in algebra anymore. We're going to talk about the world, right? So a set is just a set of distinct objects. We tend to call these objects elements of the set. A set can be defined by describing the contents, listing, or um, and we can enclose them by the curly brackets. So like this. And you may have used them before in other classes, the curly brackets, but we're going to use it a lot. So the curly brackets mean when I see it, I think of the words, the set of. So if I had a curly bracket of the set of cats, I automatically read this as the set of cats. So it's just the, it takes over those three words, so the curly brackets. So some examples, um, the set of all even numbers, um, the set of all books about Chile. So um, some examples to define, um, some examples of sets with elements, right? The elements of um, are 1, 3, 9, and 12. We see the curly bracket, so that replaces the words the set of. So we would say the set of numbers 1, 3, 9, 12. I do see curly brackets, so I replace it with the words the set of orange, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, purple. So the curly brackets replace these first three words and then you write the elements of the set. So when we write this set, we say something like the set of all even numbers. But if we actually wanted to write it as set notation with elements, we would have curly brackets and then start with all even numbers like that. Okay. Some notation. The notation will be really important because we're going to be used the notation. We're not going to write out in words everything. We're still going to use that sim symbolism we have in math. So it's good to have some sort of, um, you know, uh, foundation with the notation. So commonly we use a variable to represent an element of the set. Um, we also use this little notation that um, looks like an E, like a weird looking E, but really it replaces the four words is an element of. 
And the set um, that contains no elements, it can be the curly brackets with nothing in it, or an empty set, which is noted by like a circle and a slash through it. Okay, so if I just take a simple set, like notice that here, the set is called a variable capital A. We usually denote it by capital letters. So A is the set of A, B, C, D, E, F. Let's list the elements in the set. So the elements of the set are actually what's listed in the curly bracket. So that would be A, B, C, D, E, F. And we can use the element of symbol to denote the elements as a set of A. So in this case, we would say A, B, C, D, E, F is an, are elements of the set A. So if I wrote that in words, let me say it again. I would say the elements A, B, C, D, E, F are elements of set A. And so, um, you know, this is like the set, right, are elements of, and then the set A. So we notice that we have like the symbols, how uh, much shorter and quicker it is to write it with symbols rather than maybe the English language. But as you read the symbolism, it should, even though it looks symbols on paper, you should read it as the English language. And that takes a little practice. Okay, but we can have subsets of sets, right? So like the subset of set A is elements that are only contained in A, but maybe not all of them. So we say that we could say B is a subset, you know, as B, and then we have this little cup here, this sideways cup with a line underneath it. So that just means that B is a subset of a bigger set A, right? We could see like the cup like grabbing A, you know? And then the underline says, well, all of the elements in B in the subset could be in A, right? They could be equal. However, if they are equal, it really defeats the purpose, right? If A, B, C, D, E, F is a subset of A, B, C, D, E, F, then why do we need to call it a subset? It's just the set A, right? Um, so we don't use this, and we would use this if we were math majors in a higher level math class, but other than that, this doesn't mean much to us in the real world right now. So we'll just go ahead and use what we call proper subsets. So if we say subsets um, in this class, well, we're gonna be using a proper subset. And that just means that your subset is literally a subset of A and not all the elements of B will be A, they won't be equal. So if my set is the A, B, C, D, E, F, the subset will have contain less elements in it, meaning it could be A, B, C, or just A, B, D, E, F, you know, just less elements that are in A, but as a little group, so it could be a proper subset of A. So let me go ahead and highlight this one. That's the one we're going to use in this class. But we have to mention the fact that in math, we do have this uh, this general subset, which, yeah, I mean, I could pick a subset which all the elements in A are in the subset B, but then it really, it really wouldn't make sense to even have a subset B if they're the equal, right? So we just want to always use in this class a proper subset. So like if I gave you a subset of, of set A like 1, 3, 5, what could A be a subset of? So now we're looking at it like, well, here's a bigger sub a set, and A is this smaller subset, and it contains the numbers or elements 1, 3, 5. So what could be this bigger subset, call it B, like what could we call that? Well, some students, th there are so many answers. I just want you to know, like there are an infinite many answers. 
So for example, students most of the time see that these are odd numbers and right away they say, okay, well that means the bigger set B has to be the set of all odd numbers. And then I get a shout out usually that says, okay, well, if B is all odd numbers, couldn't it be just all real numbers, like all the numbers on the number line? And I would say, absolutely, because it's a subset. If B was all real numbers, right, that's every number on the number line, couldn't 135 be a subset? Yeah, it's a small subset, but it is. But then they say, well, don't, let's not, let's just not stick with that. Let's stick with like, um, how about, let's be more creative. Like what else could this be? We get so stuck on the number part. Well, it could be the set of one, three, five. I don't know. And maybe one, three, five represents a cat, a dog and a bird. Ooh, and let's add a cup of coffee. So notice that this, this set 135, we don't know much about the larger set, but it, we could say it's a subset of all everything else in life, right? That's the bigger set. So we could get bigger, we could add um, cars, we could add uh, vegetables, fruit, and meat, and all that stuff, right? So you would ask, well, Darlene, then what is the larger set? Well, that's just it, it's so vague, the, it gets so big that, yeah, we would want to keep the larger set within the context of the problem, which is numbers. So these first two would be ideal. But logically speaking, it, the larger set could really be the whole world and then 135 is in it, right? The whole world of everything. And it could be this, right? And so, um, and we're, so we're going to talk about that, like a larger set. What is the largest set of in the context of my problem? And we call that the universal set, which we're going to learn in just a few minutes. So right now, we just want to think about, you know, kind of get into the set mode in the mindset. So these are all correct answers. And so these, this, this list can go on and on, obviously. But we'll just stop here.